Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at performing a hypothesis test, concluding a hypothesis test, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how do we perform a hypothesis test? When performing a hypothesis test, we begin by assuming the null hypothesis is true and test it against the alternative hypothesis. So consider a situation where we have an old drug where in general 54% of patients are cured on this drug. We assume this to be true, and then we have a trial in which 63 out of 100 patients get cured on a test drug. In our hypothesis test, we have our H0, our null hypothesis, is that the proportion of cured patients P is equal to 0.54. And we take our alternative hypothesis, H1, to be that the proportion P is strictly greater than 0.54. It is important to clearly define any parameters used at the beginning of the test. We wrote that 54% of patients were cured on the old drug, and that this corresponded to P being equal to 0.54. But we should define what P is. We have that P is the proportion of cured patients. The significance of evidence in a hypothesis test may be different in different contexts. Again, we can have different contexts such as the testing of a new drug or the faultiness of teapots, for example. It is up to us to decide whether the likelihood of an outcome provides sufficient evidence of a described change in the parameter. We can use a hypothesis test to show that evidence is less significant or more significant. So in the case of a drug, this could correspond in the less significant case to the drug being a placebo or other external factors. But if it is more significant, then this is an internal problem in the case of the teapots or perhaps the quality of the manufacture or teapot material in particular. I.e. the greater success of the drug could be due to a placebo or many external factors being present. So a piece of evidence provided could appear less significant, i.e. that the drug is better. The faultiness of teapots could be mainly an internal problem with the manufacture or consistency of teapots. So a piece of evidence provided could appear more significant, i.e. that the teapots are more likely to break. We can look at the likelihood of a given outcome assuming that the null hypothesis is true by finding corresponding probabilities. What we do is we take the assumption that H0, the null hypothesis, is true, and then we examine, for example, the probability that 63 patients are cured out of 100 on the new drug, or for the teapots, the probability that two teapots are broken out of six. This threshold at which the probability of an outcome is considered to be sufficiently small is specified by the significance level. The significance level is the threshold for the probability of a test statistic taking an observed value, below which H0 is rejected. For example, we could have the 1% significance level, and we reject the alternative hypothesis if the chance or probability is less than 1%. Or we can have for the teapots the 5% significance level. And in this case, we would reject if the chance is less than 5%. We usually write the significance level as a percentage and it's normally given to us in a question. If the null hypothesis is assumed to be correct, the probability of the observed or more extreme sample value is called the p-value. The p-value is the probability of the observed or more extreme sample value of a test statistic, if H0 is assumed to be correct. So in our case, the p-value is the probability that capital X is greater than or equal to 63, since this is our observed value. And again, our capital X is the number of patients cured out of 100. This is our test statistic. In order to calculate the p-value, it's first necessary to choose a suitable distribution for the test statistic, assuming that H0 is true. Again, let's say that our capital X is the number of patients cured out of 100. 
Then we write that our n is equal to 100. That's the number of patients in the trial. And then we have that our p-value, which is not the same as our other p-value, is equal to 0.54. Since we're assuming the null hypothesis, so the probability that a given person is cured is 0.54. And the reason we have our n and p like this is because we're going to write that x is binomial with our n value of 100 and our p as being 0.54. This is the distribution of our test statistic x. And so our actual p value, which is the probability that capital X is greater than or equal to 63, this is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 62, which we can look up using a table or a calculator, and so we get 1 minus 0.9567, and therefore this is equal to 0.0433 to 4 decimal places. And this is our p-value. So how do we conclude a hypothesis test? There are two possible conclusions that can be reached from a hypothesis test. The sample provides sufficient amount of evidence to reject H0 in favour of H1. We have our null hypothesis H0 and our alternative hypothesis H1. If there is a sufficient amount of evidence to reject H0, then that is rejected, and we have H1 being in favour. Otherwise, the sample does not provide sufficient evidence to reject H0 in favour of H1. So we have our null hypothesis H0 and our alternative hypothesis H1. Since there is not enough evidence to have H1 being favourable, H0 still stands as undefeated. But we cannot say that H0 is correct from the second conclusion, just that there is an insufficient amount of evidence that has been found to reject it. So in the second case, we could not really be sure that H0 or H1 is correct. To reach the appropriate conclusion from a hypothesis test, the p-value calculated is compared with the chosen significance level. If the p-value is smaller than the significance level, the sample provides sufficient evidence against H0, which can be rejected in favour of H1. So for example, let's consider the 5% significance level. This is always decided before conducting the hypothesis test. We have our p-value from before is 0.0433 to four decimal places, and this is strictly less than the 0.05 from the 5% significance level. And so we reject H0 and we accept H1. If the p-value is not smaller than the significance level, the sample does not provide sufficient evidence against H0, which would not be rejected. Let's suppose we have instead the 1% significance level. Then we have our 0.0433, which is the p-value, and this is strictly greater this time than 0.01. And so we do not reject H0. It's important to interpret any conclusion reached in the context of the question. Again, we have our context that 54% of patients have been cured with the old drug. And then we have a trial which says that 63 out of 100 patients have been cured with the test drug. As the conclusion is a statement of significance and not certainty, the word evidence should always appear in the conclusion. At the 5% significance level, there is sufficient evidence that the test drug is more effective. Recall that at the 5% significance level, we had that our p-value 0.0433 was strictly less than the 0.05. And this is our evidence. And this suggests that the test drug is more effective. However, at the 1% significance level, there is insufficient evidence to suggest that a test drug is more effective. So we have our 1% significance level, and recall that our 0.0433 was strictly greater than the 0.01. And again, this is our evidence. But in this case, when we are to consider whether the test drug is more effective, we are left none the wiser. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example tells us that the proportion P of faulty articles in a manufacturing process has been historically found in general to be 0.05. 
a sample of 50 articles from a new manufacturing process is tested and two are found to be faulty. We wish to test whether or not there has been a reduction in the proportion of faulty articles at the 1% significance level. We're asked to write down the suitable test statistic and hypotheses and to explain the condition under which the null hypothesis is rejected. Our first step is to define the test statistic for the situation described. We have that the test statistic is the number of articles capital X that are faulty out of 50 articles. Our second step is to write down the null hypothesis. We have that our null hypothesis, which we write as H0, is going to be that P, the proportion of faulty articles, is equal to the historic value 0.05. Our third step is to write down the alternative hypothesis. We have the alternative hypothesis, which we write as H1, is such that P has to be strictly less than 0.05. This is what we're going to be testing. Our fourth and final step is to give the condition under which the null hypothesis is rejected. The actual proportion in our test or sample is 2 over 50, which is equal to 0.04. If the probability of the proportion P being 0.04 or less is smaller than 0.01, the null hypothesis is rejected. Our second example tells us that the null and alternative hypotheses for a given situation are H0, which is P is equal to 0.4, and H1, which is P is strictly less than 0.4, where P stands for the population proportion. The significance level that the test is carried out at is the 5% level. Given that 30 successes were observed out of 100 trials, decide whether or not there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Our first step is to define the test statistic for the situation described. Our test statistic, capital X, is the number of successes from 100 trials. Our second step is to write down a suitable distribution for the test statistic, assuming the null hypothesis is true. We have 100 trials and this corresponds to n being equal to 100. Using our h0, our null hypothesis, we have that our p is going to be equal to 0.4, and so x is a binomial, with n being 100 and p being 0.4. Our third step is to determine the set of values we wish to find the p-value for. Firstly, and this the gives expected us number of as our successes, value. and then assuming the observed h0 value, is going to be the probability 0.4 multiplied by the 100 trials. Which comes from H1 is 30, which is strictly less than 40. Recall that our H1 corresponds to P being strictly less than 0.4. So we want the P value for capital X being less than or equal to 30. Capital X is and then we consider this value 30. at the significance level. Our fourth step is to find the p-value. Again, the p-value is equal to the... Using a calculator, we get 0.0248 to four decimal places. Our fifth step is to compare the p-value to the significance level we found that our p-value is equal to 0.0248. We are working at the 5% significance level. And so we take our 0.0248, and this in fact is strictly less than the 0.05 from the 5% significance level. And so we in fact reject H0. Our last step is to conclude the hypothesis test in the context of the situation. There is a significant amount of evidence from the sample of 100 trials that the null hypothesis H0 should be rejected in favour of the alternative hypothesis H1. And this is the conclusion of our hypothesis test. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.